Back on the Rob Dibble Show with Ben Darnell in your afternoon drive. Kirk Kaplan on the ones and twos. Joining us on the Bobby B's hotline as we get ready for Hartford Athletic versus Charleston Battery this Friday at 730. Uh, Jordan Scarlett, one of their uh, best defenders, joins us now on the hotline. And, uh, Jordan, let's just talk about we'll go back in your career a little bit. Grew up in the Bronx after moving over here from Jamaica. You're a heck of an attacker, uh, score a bunch of goals. When did they decide to switch you back to defense and defender? Yeah, it, honestly, like that part started in Jamaica, honestly. In Jamaica, I used to play striker. Yeah. And then, you know, it's like so on the teams. But when we play in my community, like we play street ball or pickup, um, I normally play with the older guys from a young age. And so – um, I always like do moves and either make them or do something and I would score, but they will end up kicking me, you know? And I, after a while, I just keep getting kicked, so I move to midfield. But then they could still reach me in midfield. So then I just keep going back and I end up in defense, and now I do all the kicking. So. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> so so that, that's how that transition. But that also gives me the opportunity to, um, to be able to to kind of play anywhere, so I kind of have a feel for most of the positions um, in, in the eleven so far. So that's that's kind of how I went. But when I came to America now, uh, in my high school, I was kind of I was a better player, best player. So my coach put me back at the number ten spot. So that's how I was able to get a bunch of goals and assists uh, in my high school time. We were talking about this before you came on, just wondering how a draft night goes for a soccer player. As we've just had the NBA draft here recently. We're big on the NFL draft around these parts. But how does a draft night go for you, especially having family in Jamaica, family in the Bronx? Like, what were you doing? Can you remember those moments? So I wasn't in the, the first round because I went in the fourth round. So mine was the next morning. So I think the first two rounds, or the first three rounds went um, in like a day before. So I knew like I would be getting calls with my coach like the, the morning, the next morning. So, you know, I woke up, um, like my boys, we were like, um, we, the soccer had a soccer house. So my boys woke up early with me. We went to class. And then after class, we know that I'm going to go to the coach's office because they will be getting calls around 10, 10 30. So we all, he, they were standing outside his door, and um, I was sitting in the office. We got a call from uh, Orlando. Orlando called about me because I had one to a combine in, in, in Las Vegas, and they were there. So they want, wanted to get me. But then I'd also went to a New York Red Bulls combine that they set up on their own. So they, I, they wanted me also. So Orlando had the 64th pick. Red Bulls had the 63rd pick. So Orlando was going to pick me, but then Red Bulls find out about that, and then they Red Bulls draft me. And after that, it was just honestly like, yeah. As soon as that, I called my mom, I called my family, I called my friends, and yeah, we're all ecstatic, honestly. Talking to Jer- Jordan Scarlett, uh, he's a defender for the Hartford Athletic, grew up uh, in Jamaica, moved to the Bronx, and then he went to Iona. Um, tell me about a corner kick and where you get to be pos- positioned on defense um, and, and is it one of your favorite plays as a defender? Am I attacking the corner kick or am I defending the corner kick? You're defending. Okay. Yeah. It's, um, so normally in my past teams, um, we normally like go man for man. I kind of, me personally, I, I, I like, I'm normally given the task of matching up with your best attacking player on set pieces. So whoever the tallest guy is or whoever have the most goals or get the most looks at goal. I'm normally matched up with them, but um, since playing for Hartford, I'm I'm more for the zone guy, so I'm in the center, which that's where most of the crosses end up anyways. So it's about like um, having the first reaction because the runners are, are, are attacking me, so I have to attack the ball as well. So if I just get the first jump, I normally have first contact, and every, I normally get the ball away. Nice. Just watching you and hearing you talk about that play, like you're a very physical soccer player and you went through a setback last year. You suffered a knee injury. You're coming back from that and having a successful season so far this year. But what was like the key to get over that injury, whether it was mentally or for your rehab? What has it been like since that injury? Um, 
So, honestly, that injury was probably the most pain I've ever felt in my entire life. Like, the night after I was released from the hospital, I I just, I still feel it till this day. But um, it's just about, like, knowing that I, that, like, I will get to play again. And it's just, I like challenges. Like, growing up, there's always been challenges. And you get this, um, this pleasure when, when you overcome something and you see the light of the tunnel. And now to be able to be on the field and to be playing 90 minutes game in, game out, it's just show that, like, you know, the your 10,000 hours, eventually you always cross that threshold and you could keep going forward. So, you know, it's having a good support system. My girlfriend, my mom, and my, my best friends and stuff, like, checking in on me, make sure everything went smooth while I was in surgery. And just, like, the trainers and, like, the coaches, those help too, you know? And... While I was coming back, like, my team Hartford, like, the players, like, I'm jogging on the sideline. They're in mid-game, and they might get a little second break. They get a water break, and I'm jogging, and they're all like, yeah, let's go, bro. Keep going, keep going. You know, little, like, just like you might have you having, a, like, a down day. You know, you can't wait to play, and your teammates see you jogging. They're like, yeah, let's go, bro. Like, just that alone could get you going for the next two weeks. So it's just a good support system, and just to know that, like, there's a lot of the tunnel, honestly, that got me across the threshold. Jordan, I know when you were in college, you were on the all-academic team a few times. Um, what were some of the things you studied in college, and, and what are you into right now? Yeah, um, I studied marketing. I have a marketing degree. Um, I was never really good at math, so I always overcompensate in my other classes. So in my other classes, I always make sure I try to get a B-plus or an A to maybe make up for stats or finances. But I like the marketing side of it, honestly. Those are my favorite classes. Just just the way things are presented to people and how you can get your message across and branding and all those stuff. Um, those things really intrigue me. Let me give you some marketing on Charles ba- Charleston Battery. They stink. They're smelly people. <laughs> That's how they win games is they don't use deodorant and they don't wash themselves. That is a, a big secret to their success. I don't know if you know that. I'm trying to market that across the eastern seaboard, sir. Uh, <laughs> he knows it's true. All right, let's do the five questions we ask everybody with Jordan Scarlett. Kurt's ready with the music. Uh, Athletic Charleston Battery, 7.30 kickoff. This is a Friday night special, boys and girls, so don't miss it. A big one, if we can get it, can move up the table against this second-place team in the USL on the east side. All right, these are five questions we ask everybody, Jordan. Your coach has done this. Several of your teammates have done this with quite some success, and we know a lot about Jamaican-Americans like yourself. For some reason, okay. you guys love your Hennessy, and that's question number one. I feel like that could be a part of the answer. If you are out and about and you see a Hartford Athletic supporter, what drink would you want them to buy for you at the bar if they offered? What would be the drink of choice from Jordan Scarlett? Okay, it depends on the night. If it's, if it's a light night, I'll take a sorrel red stripe there. Ooh. Beautiful drink. Yeah, yeah, trust me. Cold, solid roast fried beer is nice. If we're if we're having fun, no, I I go for a little NSC and 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 um cranberry. Just calm. Mm-hmm. The Hennessy and cranberry. Right yeah, and the Hennessy and Red Bull. That has been the top two for Jamaican people. Yeah, no going <laughs> All right. All right. What about food, sir? I know we have a lot of great Jamaican restaurants around here, but you, you know, you side the fence as the New York kid, too. So what kind of food do you know Hartford has and you're happy to be here because of such? Uh, well, there's a, there's a few really um, good rest, Jamaican restaurants. Um, well, to be honest, my, my girlfriend is a very wonderful cook. Oh, but don't nice really work. Eat, uh, <laughs> I Good don't job. really eat out a lot, but um, <laughs> every now and then we we stop by. Um, there's a Jamaican spot um, called Russell's. There's a those that 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 one is really good. Or Duns River. Yep. I normally go get some Jamaican food on like maybe every every two weeks or so. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. How you kind of answered this question already, Jordan? But I want to know more about the Sandlot soccer that you played as a kid. You already mentioned you were the young one against all the older guys in Jamaica. What was like that field like? What was like that whole experience like when you were a youngster growing up? How how was the the Sandlot soccer of Jordan Scarlett? 
Yeah, I think like just like I feel like today in today's day and age, everything is for the younger kids. Everything is so organized, you know. Yeah. So everybody's told exactly what to do, but like in Jamaica, it's just pick up. You know, you get your best friends. And back in my time when I was playing, like I think I all my friends were better than me. I just they were just so good, and like um, they're the one who progressed me. Whether we were playing street ball, so we will play on a all right, for example on a Sunday. 7 o'clock, I'm playing with the grown folks, right? Um, 7 a.m. And then we'll play that. And then around 4.30 again, I play with my age group. And then there's a night soccer, like, close to, like, 10 o'clock. We're playing on the street under the light, you know? And that's just, like, expressing yourself. You could try the different things. You could learn so many other tricks that other players do that you could put in your locker for a future. And I just feel like it just gives you, like... You know, meet friends, but it gives you a different type of expression when you're able to, like, without, you know, play without rules, you know? Totally. I'm so down for some 10 o'clock street soccer in Jamaica. Man, that would be <laughs> such a sight. Uh, uh, one site that we love is the supporter section over there. I've got my tambourine ready for 2024. I'm loud and proud with a lot of the drums over there. Horns have been a suggestion from some Hartford Athletic players, but if you were in the support Supporter section, Jordan. What would your instrument be? Uh, instrument. Hmm. You know, so like in the Jamaican stadium, yeah. whether it's track and field yeah. or soccer, right? They always have like orange. Yeah. Like that's, yeah, the same thing you said. Like that's what I that's like when I was called for the Jamaican national team, like before I was, before, like it was a dream to go, you know, and to play in the, the national stadium. And when I got called and I was on the bench and I was just soaking in the atmosphere, like it just felt like I was at home again as a kid watching the TV and hearing the orange and to be there and hear them. Like I feel like that's something that will really go, you know, like some good, like orange. But also, like, do you know that that Liverpool song "You Never Walk Alone"? Yes, yes. Yeah. Imagine if we, at Hartford, we create created something for ourselves that the whole entire stadium sing when we're winning up two zero or whenever we could nice. be down or whatever. That's to motivate us. Like we have a specific song that everyone knows that that's the that's the bread and butter of Hartford, you know? All right, we're writing stuff down in the studio right yeah. now. I think it's a consensus, guys. <laughs> we need more horns in that section, and Kurt's working on a song for us right now. All right, last question here, Jordan. What was your childhood obsession? Like a movie, a TV show, something other than soccer that when you were a kid you were kind of obsessed with? Okay. So this is a heartbreaker, but I was so obsessed with wrestling. Oh, oh like, like pro wrestling, like WWE, WWF, pro wrestling? WWE, like The Rock, Stone Cold, <laughs> like all of those. Like, But I'm telling like my mom, she would... um. She would buy me the books, like the like the writing books with The Rock on it, or the, just a wrestling mania. Everyone on it, oh. like Kane, like Undertaker, and I'm telling, like in the schoolyard on our like breaks in primary school, we would like actually like wrestle and <laughs> so, no, ha- kind of go halfway, you know, do the moves and stuff like that. We, I was really into it, and then, and then, I found out. That it was fake when oh! I came to the. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Man. Predetermined. Predetermined. Predetermined, ah, but yeah. they still spar. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Oh, that, that took the wind out of my sails, man. I'm telling you, when I just, it, I was just like, oh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> enough, enough now, you know? So that was one of them. I would really love wrestling. Awesome. awesome. Maybe we can hook up uh, Jordan with some tickets to WWE here. Get you yep. back into it, sir. Yeah. But good luck on Friday. What, 730 with the kickoff. Charleston Battery in town. We need a win. And hopefully this guy provides some of that action for us, Jordan Scarlett. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for having me, guys. Thank you so much.